everybody welcome to another edition of wrestling remembered i am your host joe what a day lowry thank you everybody for joining us here on this friday and this week's we're talking hypotheticals here as we pit our stars of yesterday against the stars of today you know video games can do it why can't we right you know so that's what i'm saying on this one but first with me as always are my wrestling esteemed colleagues and first up, we have uh, my brother from another mother, the Poe Laureate of Money in the Pharaoh Channel, and a worthy challenger for my D30 title. <laughs> Let's welcome to the show, Mr. Benny Scarlett, a.k.a. The Player. Benny, what's happening? As I said last night, thank you. Thank you very much. Give me a chill, dog, baby. Yeah, it was a close <laughs> close match last night. Very, very hotly contested. You did a great job. Very deserving champion. Yeah, it was a good time. Held by all. Next up, we uh, he hails from the great state of Massachusetts. He's the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. He is the president of Thursday nights, Mr. Phil Desiree. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, you didn't know? Your <laughs> ass better call somebody. It is Wrestling Remembered, people. Happy Friday to all you guys and gals. Yeah, TGIF, TGIF. Amen. And finally, he is the Thursday night disciple, the man who wears the stripes on wrestling's hottest game show, the 30 in high school he handed out hall passes while he wore those sunglasses that's right folks. <laughs> let's welcome eso welcome eso what's happening what's going on guys and congratulations champ what an outstanding performance you put oh, in oh yeah you know epic match riveting stuff riveting it was riveting. <laughs> <laughs> your bandage is gone joe you're a quick healer man yes, yeah, I, was. Man. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't i didn't do the job correctly that's what it you're, was you're a good blader yeah, you remember the style of of the 1980s, the wrestlers like Flair. It would be the suit, the three piece suit, and then the athletic tape, the, oh, the yeah, yeah. right over on the forehead. That was the if, if Triple H could, copied that in the 90s. Yeah, if anybody could pull it off, it was Ric Flair. That is, or you know, million dollar <laughs> suits, thousand dollar watches, and a friggin' ace bandage across his forehead. Yep, the athletic tape. Yep. <laughs> so, we're, so we're talking like you know, old meets new, new meets old, all that stuff, and. Uh, we'll go around. I, you know, we got a couple of graphics and so forth. But the first one I thought off the bat um, was this one. I'll, I'll show it first up. Here it oh, is. Oh wow! Henry yeah. Versus Dad so. Sika. You know what I mean? Like, just think of the possibilities. You know, it, it, it's crazy to think that you could do this, even in video games. But I mean, can you just imagine? What what the angle of this would be? Father versus son, something like that. You know what I mean? Just I don't know. What do you what do you guys think about that? We'll go around the room. Benny, what do you think of that? Seeker? Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, who who would have thought, right? You got the athlete athleticism of yeah. Roman Reigns, but you have the pure savagery yeah. of, of Alpha. Yeah, it's like two different uh entities going at it. Unbelievable. Phil, what do you think of that one? Well, I say holy Oedipus Rex, man. Talk about Oedipal Complex, huh? Father versus son. What a battle, huh? Yeah. The Savage of Sika, barefooted and all, outweighing yeah. uh, his son by some 33 pounds, 34 pounds thereabouts, but equally of equal height and proportion. Sika definitely will have the harder head of the two and definitely the savagery on his side. But could he bring himself to go all the way and take out his son? Yeah, you, uh, you know, know that's the question. Yeah, no, those are those are going to be a lot of questions for. I I, I, have, I personally have a ton of graphics lined up, so you guys are going to love this stuff. And I got your stuff too coming. So, uh, yes, yeah, so what do you think, Sika? Reigns. I, I, mean, I, I could I couldn't imagine anything. You have Captain Lou in the corner versus oh, uh, yeah. Paul Heyman on the other side. Come on, that's that would be classic. I've been I haven't had the chance yet to pick up that new uh, WWE 2K24 game. Yeah. But yeah, you, I've seen people doing these like fantasy matches and stuff like yeah. that. And you know that would be kind of a cool thing to uh, to maybe do if we can create some. Last year I wanted to create some custom characters for for Mike and and. Uh, uh, Jimmy, but uh, yeah. maybe we should create some ca custom characters of ourselves so we can uh, do some simulations of us with some of these wrestlers. Exactly. Uh, I would definitely uh, want to do that. Um, so I been, I did a lot of stuff, but, you know, Benny, you wanted a couple of graphics for this one. Um, so I'm going to throw them up on the screen and you, and you tell us why you picked this one. The first one is MJF versus Roddy Piper. What a, what a match this would be. I mean, I would pay anything to see this. Yeah. Two of the greatest talkers of all time. You know, yeah. Piper, no matter who Piper wrestled, you know, even if it was Andre the Giant, 
you never thought he was outmatched when he wrestled Hogan, even though he was you know, maybe five or six inches smaller, you know, right. out by maybe 50, 75 pounds. That was never a factor because he was a fighter. Right. And with MJF, he, he wrestles a lot larger. So, I mean, can you imagine the, the buildup to this match? That's That would even be better than the match. Just the, the pre-match hype, all the promos. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, when you uh, sent that, I remember you talking about that at a couple of podcasts ago. And, yeah, that would be an ideal situation, MJF versus Rowdy Rowdy Piper. That would be – That'd be one for the ages. That would uh, that would um, headline one of the pay per views, if not main event. But um, you had another one here. This one I actually really, really loved. It takes one of the superstars from today, and it takes pretty much one of the oldest superstars in Killer Kowalski going up against Gunther, the current Ooh. Intercontinental Champion, the current longest reigning Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, talk about this one, Betty. What do you think? What do you think about this? Well, I mean, and what was Gunther's name before he was Gunther? He was Walter. Ah, uh, yeah. Right? That's right. Oh, I mean, yeah. That's and, right. And wow. Walter and Gunther, to me, have so much in common. You know, Walter Kowalski, Killer Kowalski, was a yeah. damn – even though he doesn't look very muscular, you know, right. Bruno said numerous times the guy was a damn machine, and he never got tired. You had a, You had to be in your best shape you know, cardio wise to keep up with the guy and right. Gunther same way. I mean, Gunther is just effortless. He makes everything look real. Yeah. Um, I would, I would pay to see that one too. Yeah. That was a good one. I like that one. I really do. And um, all right. So we're cruising right along here. The president, you had an interesting twosome here. Um, Bob Backlund and Brock Lesnar. Oh my. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you think? I chose the young Backlund. Is that all right? That's more than all right. That's actually uh, perfect. That's fresh off his win of superstar Billy Graham on the right. And uh, obviously Brock Lesnar, pretty recent photo of him and so forth. Sure. Uh, well, uh, this yep. match, I don't know. You tell me. This, I, this I gladly out. will. Glad, you know, and having the, the good fortune of meeting Backlund on several occasions and Brock too, you get an idea when you're in someone's presence. You know, you can almost feel a vibe from them. Um you know, and I certainly have some stats to back up my contentions here. Uh, it would be obviously a great battle as both have incredible uh, collegiate backgrounds. Uh, Brock, obviously, obviously an NCAA Division One champion in the super heavyweight. I mean, he was, I think, 280 pounds at one point. Backland was both heavyweight and uh, I think at 190 NCAA uh, D2 champion for North Dakota State. And actually, I think he wrestled his first year in Iowa, Joe, and I, oh, yeah. I can't think of the town, but I'll have to look it up for you. But uh, okay. he spent a little time in Iowa, too. But it's interesting, too. Um, both men phenomenally strong. Brock more explosive with power, whereas Backlund right. very quick. Brock explosive. But if we look at strength, okay, yeah, I'm going to say something that a lot of people might not agree with. But actually, not only pound for pound, yeah. but in total, Bob Backlund was stronger. And I will base that yeah. on a few things, notably the bench press. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brock had an incredible bench press of 475 pounds. Okay. Unbelievable by any measure. Okay. At a weight of outweighing Backlund legitimately by 40 to 50 pounds. Right. Backlund benched over 500 pounds. And while I won't speak to all the supplements that Brock may or may not have had, Backlund yeah. was, by all accounts, a natural athlete. Yeah, sure. And again, again, that's only one measure of his strength. Yeah. But if we look at some of the old training montages, Backlund just phenomenal, not only uh, with the physical yeah. strength into things, but the conditioning factor. Uh, um, Backlund, so, Backlund yeah. had raw strength. I know that. I mean, his uh, wrestling repertoire was wearing you down with that strength, longevity. You know, yeah, 40, 40, 50 minute matches. Yep. And then he would do that. Um, you know, he would put on. I mean, I remember the Morocco match in 83. I think it was a Texas, some match he had in Morocco. And the crowd was kind of, you know, losing interest in a little bit. And he did this arch on um, lifting up Morocco from his backside. Did the that arch. short arm scissors lift that he would do was unbelievable. And the, crowd, the crowd just woke up and was like, holy shit, this guy's strong. And you, you, you always, that's dead weight. That's yeah, dead weight. Dead okay. Weight. And, and Morocco was pushing 300 pounds that time. Yep. Too, so. it, 
and you know, and from a shooting perspective, you know, when Backlund started with Eddie Graham, and and the yeah. business was in a place where uh, the local champion or you know a local contender would take on any comer, right? And this huge guy they brought in who had an amateur background, he's like six foot eight, like 350 pounds, okay? Yeah. And everyone, and, and a lot of the guys in the Florida Territory were sweating this guy there. So they put Backlund out there. Yeah. Backlund beat him with a simple headlock, okay? Wow. Yeah, Backlund is a grinder, all right? He doesn't have that explosive yeah. Brock Lesnar kind of stuff. But if he gets a hold of you... I yeah. think he could power out of or power into just about any hold. So, yeah, sure. you know, and again, both are farm boys from Minnesota. Okay. Kind of yep. important as well. All right. Yeah. And I, and I've never met a farm boy who wasn't just a, a phenom physically and, and sure. a salt of the earth kind of person too. Oh, so yeah. two great guys, two great athletes be a hell of a match. Yeah. That is really, really good. That's, yeah, that's so you get thoughts on that one. Back uh, versus absolutely. Brock. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you have to look at the the conditioning the conditioning back then. What Bob yeah. had to deal with versus Brock had the most state of the art equipment in him. Brock had all the performance en- enhancing drugs in him. Right. There's no there's no comparison. Ba- Backlund would have crushed him under under uh, normal circumstances. And Brock is one hell of an athlete, though. Yeah, absolutely. Did yeah. You Brock see his daughter actually won. Uh, she set the record for that shot put again or something. Oh, the daughter. Yeah. Yep. She, yeah. She said no. Didn't she break his record or something like that at the beginning? And then she oh, she broke she broke some record of Brock's. I don't know <laughs> if it was shot, but it was something else. But um, or or something equivalent to that. It was that's when she started getting noticed, and she set the overall record, I think, with the shot put. That I mean, obviously, you know, the the apple didn't fall very far for this one. I mean, she's an impressive athlete to begin with. So the genetic lottery strikes yeah. again. Oh yeah, unbelievable. Coupled with, I'm sure. Coupled with, I'm sure, just incredible uh, nose to the grindstone, you know, yep. work ethic that Brock has too. You know, yep. a um, couple of quotes here. Uh, Maria Davis at Backlund made you wrestle, and you got your money's worth. Absolutely. Jason moaning. Holly Race tried to blow Backlund in a uh, blow Backlund in a 60 minute Broadway. Backlund was doing jumping jacks at the end. Harley was impressed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think Harley had the quite the same training regimen. As Backlund wrestling knowledge, yes, <laughs> but training regimen, no. Harley had three Marlboro cigarettes before you went out there, you know. Yeah. And I just want to mention this that tonight's uh, beautiful shirt that Benny's wearing was picked up by the lovely Beth Hopper. Beautiful, Thank beautiful. Thank you, Playmate. Wardrobe by Botany 500. Remember yeah, that? Botany 500. <laughs> Remember the bum athletic sweatshirts? Oh, I had a bunch of them. I love those. They fit so well. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Joe Myers Baby Cake says Backlund could have had Rocky music play through the entire every match. So, yeah, Backlund could have definitely. And a special shout out to Baby Cake's $5 donation. Awesome. Nice. Hey, so, all right. right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Joe Myers. Let's celebrate, shall we? That's awesome. Thank you very much, Baby Cake. She loves doing that. I think she likes Happy it because it's her message noticed, you know. Much appreciated. That's really cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So, okay, so I came up with a whole bunch of crazy scenarios here, and you guys should probably laugh at this. I'm going to start off. We have so many here. I'm, I'll start off. I'll, I'll do a Roman Reigns one. Um, this might be up your alley, yeah, so I, I'm shocked you didn't met, you'd want to do this, but what if we had this match? What? What about that? Reigns Brother. versus Hogan. Now, I'm talking, oh, definitely- I'm, I'm talking Hogan in his heyday. Um, no, I mean, the, the, the crowd would be, uh, you'd have a very unique uh, clash of styles. Sure. Um, oh, yeah. You know, Roman likes to, you know, he likes to have that heavy hand in a, in a match where, you know, Hogan has the, the pump up and, uh, you know, the, 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 the Hulk up and the comebacks and the yeah. four moves and a leg drop. It would sure. be, uh, it would be interesting. I think the fans would be into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's definitely, uh, Roman's definitely going down that same path that Hogan went to. I mean, Hogan started that that Hollywood path that The Rock right. ended up following, and Stone Cold followed, and now it looks yeah. like Roman's going to follow that that same path down there. So they're nice. very similar. Um, I don't know if Roman would have gotten over as w- well as Hogan did back when Hogan was wrestling, whereas I think heyday, Hogan right? transcends generations. You know, I think yeah. Rocky could have gotten over. You know, The Rock could have gotten over in any generation too. Do you think um, this match would have been long, though? You think it would have been long? Because Hogan didn't wrestle long matches. I mean, he did on occasion, but 
not as not like range. Range is out there 20, 25 minutes during the big matches and stuff. So yeah, only I in think you have more time. Man. More time would be dedicated to entrances and flexing <laughs> than the actual match. Yeah, probably right. Phil, go ahead, chime in. What do you got on this one? I was just saying Hogan would uh, kind of let his hair down in Japan a little bit and be <laughs> and push himself and be pushed a little more, and actually was capable of putting on. Uh, more traditional matches, I think, over there too. If, you know, of course, he had a lot of great opponents to uh, work right. with over there, and he really had to rise to the occasion. So, I think Hogan had Hogan had it in him. But as we discussed, as you guys discussed on the last episode, how again, Joe, you were mentioning how Hogan and uh, who was he running the loop with Orndorff? They would wrestle in yeah. three different cities in one day, so yeah. that could kind of limit your in ring style, you know. So, schedule was a big factor, I think, in style yeah. too. I think it was overall appearance by both guys, too, Orndorff and uh, Hogan, that the fans really wanted to see. Never mind putting on a 20 minute uh, show. Yeah. Uh, tonight, you know, so it's fans. Uh, Play it. What do you think about this one? Reigns I think, versus Hogan. I think it's a good match. I think it's like a maybe 12, 13 minute match. You yeah. know, that uh, Roman's going to kick out of the, uh, the leg drop, Hulk's going to kick out of the spear. You know, they probably have a, you know, a, a, a count out or a DQ or something like that so that they can do it again. It would be a very good entertaining match for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it'd be a lot of outside interference. I think the bloodline oh, yeah. would be involved. That's what I, that's what I forgot to talk about the rock versus seeker real quickly. There's a bloodline match right here. The absolute bloodline match right here. You know, you got, you got, you know what I mean? So you would, would you have outside interference? Who would be interfering on whose behalf? That type of thing. So you know, yeah, you, think, you got Cap, you got Captain Lou and Paul Heyman. You got, a, yeah, you got all these scenarios that could take place. It's kind of neat doing this stuff. So and Afa too. And Afa. Right. Well, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you back to the Samoan days, and uh, just like uh, Rock versus Seeker. What about this one? How about that? The Usos, undisputed tag team champions, going up against multi tag team champs, uh, the Wild Samoans, Afa and Seeker. Look at that one. Um. I think this would be a match probably – I think Jimmy and Jay would have to carry them after a while because the savagery of uh, both uh, Afra and Sika was more limited to, you know, in-the-corner type stuff, um, that thing. So let's go around the room real quickly. Uh, we'll start with Phil. What do you think of that one? Well, you know, both both uh, teams love to use kicks and sidekicks, and I could really see where the Samoans would be yeah. – far more versatile and powerful kickers being barefoot, having that mass too. And again, they're both deceptive. They have deceptive agility and explosiveness. So, you know, and they can catch you anywhere with that Samoan drop. And I do think that that added weight can really be an advantage. I mean, they outweigh each of the Usos by some 70 pounds or so, and that's pretty substantial, you know, and I, I again, I think age and treachery would overcome the youth in this case. It's funny, and I saw the match in '79. Uh, what was that Tito Santana and Ivan Putski? Yeah, um, they were so much quicker than when I saw them in '82, '83, because they had that little absence there for a while, and they came back in '81, and they seemed like they had gotten a little heavier, more stronger, but not as quick. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, ESO, what do you think about that match, Jimmy and Jay Uso, up against their? What, I'm assuming their uncles or. Yeah, they're uncles, right? Are they all uncles? Are they the, are they their uncles? I think they are, right? Somehow, somehow. But yeah, I would say, uh, let's see, you have probably, each Uso is probably 220, 225, and each Wild yeah. Simone is what, 315 to 330, oh, they, yeah. 340? They had, they had yeah. a huge combined weight, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Yep. They also, you know, from what I saw, again, I saw them later in their career, they still seem to move pretty well. Um, right. They, they like to break the rules a little bit more. Not that the Usos don't break the rules, but uh, they would break the rules in different ways. The Usos break the rules with interference. The uh, right, uh, the Samoans would break it with, say, a foreign object or a bone pulled out or something like that. <laughs> or they um, just gross them out, Bruce, by eating a raw the head of a raw yeah. fish. Did you see yeah, the Usos really doing just, that? Yeah, the head of a raw fish. Just really freak it. Freak Make the them up. puke. Yeah. They had to eat something, so they had to eat something that was safe for everybody, so they had some fish on it. They'd eat stuff that would make a billy goat sick. As they, the way I'm looking at all these things is, would the Samoans get over now, and would the Usos get over then? Oh, and back, yeah. in, back in those days, the Usos would not have gotten over in the 80s. They were a little bit too small for the time. Yeah. But the Samoans, I think right now, that you know, I still think that team would work. Yeah. 
What is yeah. that team? Uh, uh, a share? What, what, I forget the team. Uh, Indo Shear. Indo Shear. Oh, yeah. You know, they remind me of a, a bulked up Samoans type man. Uh, Even take. the AOP. The, uh, yeah, AOP. Benny, what do you think? Your turn. Go ahead. Wild um, Samoans. Like, like, like Phil said, you got the, the youth and you got the athleticism of the Usos versus yeah. the sheer brutality of, of the Samoans. I'm going with the Samoans in like an eight minute match. Now, obviously the longer it goes, they're going to start getting gassed. So right. they got, you know, but another, a, another great match. And of course you're going to have a, you know, probably outside interference. Lou Albano is going to, you know, slip my meatball sub and they're going to slip on it. Yeah. You know, something like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. It, you always wonder if, um, you know, the wild Samoans would bring in some foreign objects I'm trying to think of what some of the stuff uh, you, you'd mentioned the fish thing, maybe a know, coconut, a coconut, something like that. You know, you, they would have to have some assistance in this match. There's no doubt about it, because Jimmy and Jey Uso they always survive. The, they always maybe, survive. Uh, the uh, Johnny Johnny Fabio's barbecue yeah, sauce. John, Johnny Fabulous is John Cena singing for those barbecued ribs. There you go. Raw so, fish. It goes great in raw fish heads. It really does. Yeah, there you go. So moving on. This one's kind of cool. This will help you out. This is kind of current. Uh, storyline, so to speak. The Rock versus Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> you talk about a match that, like, you, I personally, if I went to see this stuff, I'd be like, what the hell is going on here? Because you get Dusty Rhodes in his heyday versus The Rock. Um, you know, anything's possible. You know, both great talkers on the mic. I think the interviews would be, the, the pre-match hype interviews would be just unbelievable. And, uh, I'll it would be a battle elbow versus the bionic elbow. That's exactly yeah. Bruce. You're yeah. right on, brother. You right go. on. Right. Say that again, Bruce. That's a good sound bite. What is it? Excellent. People's elbow versus the bionic elbow. There you go. You know I, wasn't it, baby. Even, I wasn't even thinking of that. Yeah. When I that that. I was, you know, the rocks good talking call. about Dusty and all his promos. And I'm like, shit, what if he just came down from heaven and decided to wrestle a match with this guy? You know, it, it, I would think it'd be incredible. Benny, what do you think of that? You know, same thing, like the, the pre-match hype, all the promos, you know, they're, yeah. they're going to build to a crescendo. And, you know, Dusty, you know, of course, he never met a gym that he liked. I think he, he was <laughs> he was allergic to the element F.E., which that's a, the periodic periodic table for uh, iron. But oh, by the way, I mean, his his matches with um, Billy Graham at the Garden. Yeah. Good matches. I mean, oh, they had the crowd Everything. going. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think it would be a very entertaining match. Yeah, and let us not forget that, that um, Dusty uh, packed a muffler. If any of you know what I mean by that, uh, and of course that would be uh, wonderful to combat diarrhea, Dwayne. The muffler, if for the uninformed, I'm sure people in the chat. I wonder if anyone in the chat can pick up on that. Um, it was a Dusty specialty where he would take gauze tape, wrap it around his hand, yeah, form it into like a wedge of sorts. And they kind of insert it in the in the uh, the back of the tights to kind of absorb sweat and other such things during the course of a match. But wow. yeah, it, we're getting a little gross. But I, you know, I could see Dusty being a little resourceful and perhaps using that as a Not perhaps good. as a an offensive offensive weapon. I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy. Combine crazy. that with the elbow, take out the rock, perhaps. Unbelievable. What do you think, ESO? I just don't. I, I don't want anything to do with that muffler. <laughs> he calls it the muffler drop. <laughs> so here's a good one. Um, now it, there's a current top star versus probably the star, and we got Cody Rhodes battling Bruno San Martino. Ooh. Uh, um, you know, Bruno in his prime versus Rhodes. Cody, I would assume this is his prime now. I would say this is probably a major draw in a very, very good wrestling match. A question again is how long would they go for? Um, you know, would it be a 10 minute match, 20 minutes? Will they could they go 60 minutes? Could Bruno last 60 minutes? Certainly. You know what I mean? So let's oh, uh what do you think? Leia, what do you think about this one? Well, I mean, the, the, the first comment is Bruno wrestled 90 minute matches against yeah. Gorilla Monsoon. There was no no question about Bruno's stamina. So that I mean, I could easily see a 60 minute Broadway. I mean, now if it was yeah. a shoot fight. You know, Bruno would win probably in about 11 seconds, I think, yeah. um, with a backbreaker or a bear hug. But, um, you know, and it's really funny because when we talked about this episode, 
I can't see Bruno translating into 2024. Hard as I tried, because you know the, the whole you know the whole story about about being uh, being in Italy and being living in the mountains while the Nazis were occupying their home and having a, a rheumatic fever and you know the mom using the leeches and all that stuff. I mean, yeah. it doesn't translate. It, it translated in the 60s. It doesn't translate now. And I mean, you know, the whole, you know, being in New York, Bruno was in the right place at the right time. It was, you know, serendipity, all, all the, you know, all yeah. the moons aligned together in, you know, Bruno in 1963 in New York with that large Italian population. It was pure gold. He, they, they printed money, but that no longer exists. So, I mean, well, he, he I, don't know, to- I don't know if Bruno would be even uh, on uh, a character on TV in 2024. You mentioned, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the, the Italy having to go up and down the mountains, the leeches and all that stuff. I think with today's um, production teams, they could sell this. They could sell it. They could put actual footage, recreate actual footage. Unlike the sixties, they really couldn't do that. Right. Um, but you could, you know, you'd show the, it, the mountains in Italy, you'd show like the war, you'd show, you know all that stuff that's happening. It, you could, you could, you could probably get someone sucked in like that. What do you think, Phil? You think they could do that? Yeah, I think they could, and I think that Bruno could probably demand a stipulation pre-match right. and say that if he wins, then Cody has to remove that neck tattoo. Because I, I, <laughs> I, I, I could, I'd love to see Bruno's face if he looked and saw, you know, in this day and age, I, I you yeah. know, a neck tattoo. What the hell's that on your neck? What yeah, the yeah hell's exactly. That on your neck? Yeah, you. yeah. Get that off so, your neck, you Jesus Christmas. Bruno would probably that. make him like tape it up before stepping in the ring with him. But, yeah. Now, would, would Cody be a heel or would Cody be a baby face? I don't know. This I, has, this has, has shades of Bruno and Pedro on it, you know. They're both, they're both well, yeah. Well, that was a 75 minute draw. So yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. He yeah. wrestled long matches. Yeah. I, I, well, Bruno would have a very, very short uh entrance. He doesn't have a entrance theme or anything. He just came right True. out. He didn't wear a you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how they would market an entrance for Bruno. Just he'd come down like he always did. He'd run down, you know, probably uh, clap some hands on the way and all that stuff. And he's in the ring, and that's it, waiting for his opponent. I think you go know, go to the corner, do the sign of the cross, and he, yeah, uh, get he'd ready. Do that, and he'd probably yeah. do like push ups and sit ups or uh, a lot of lumbar lumbar type exercises while Cody did his entrance. Because Bruno would not be interested in that. He'd just want to wrestle. You know what I mean? Kind of shades of Hook. I don't know if you guys have seen Hook wrestle in AEW. He sits in the corner with his head uh, on the top turnbuckle and waits for the entrance and the, all that stuff to be over with for his other for his opponent. So it's kind of a neat thing, you know? He's yeah. kind of got that mentality where I don't give a shit about your entrance. I'm here to wrestle. So he, he hides put, under his hair like Raven yeah, used to. He, he hides in the turnbuckle, like, you know, wait. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, so what do you think? Bruno versus Rhodes. All right. First of all, it would have to be a Broadway match. Listen, you take the time. Uh, at the time, Cody, uh, the time of Bruno, Cody would have had to have been a heel. Uh, anybody with tattoos was kind of, you know, looked upon as like kind of taboo back then. So Cody would definitely be the heel. I definitely think Cody could have gotten over back in those days. It would have been a tremendous, tremendous match there. Um no, I, I think Bruno, like everybody's saying, I don't think Bruno would transition as well over to today's WWE. Um, I'd wonder what type of gimmick they'd have to give him because it would have to be a gimmick. He'd have to be some type yeah. of Italian, you know, maybe, uh, oh. Definitely. So, uh, Her- heritage would be involved. There's no doubt about it. Some type yeah, of oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, whether it yeah. be like a mafia type thing or, you know, who knows which way they would go with it. But it would definitely be, uh, I, I, I would definitely say Bruno would struggle in this day yeah. and age. Uh whereas Cody I think could have made it back back in the uh back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah he would have exactly. had that maybe that combination with a tattoo. Uh yeah. but at the same time he's got that overwhelming almost like a gorgeous George uh uh you know personality that overwhelming gorgeous personality George. there. Cody would have been a Cody would have been a good NWA territory wrestler I believe. Oh yeah definitely he would have been he would making the rounds he'd be that uh uh, influential, con- condescensional journeyman, as they said, he would yeah. be. He'd be everywhere. So, all right. So we're gonna take a quick break, but when we come back from this break, we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna hit the female side of things. So stay tuned for that. We'll be right back, everybody. 
And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialist. 631 631- Two six one six four two zero. That's six three one two six one six four two zero. Auto Excellence. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No. I mean, I need a dumpster. <sighs> well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, six three one nine hundred dump. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics, pride, performance, and partnerships. All right, everybody, we are back. Welcome back to Wrestling Remembered, the show that takes you back to the good old days. And in case you're just joining us, we're talking about uh, old versus new, yesterday's stars taking on today's stars, and we've had some good ones so far. And I, as promised before the break, I said we'd uh, hit up some of the women's side of things. Um, so I'm going to hit you with the first one here. Let me just pull it up. And what th- I, this one seems like it could go somewhere. Um, we have a Lunder Blaze taking on the man, Becky Lynch. Two women who I who I think would probably be evenly matched that could probably put a hell of a show on. They're both great on the mic. Um, they they're both world former world champions and so forth. So uh, I'm going to hit the room here first. Uh, ESO, what do you think of that matchup? Listen, Medusa Michelli, Alundra Blaze was probably one of my favorite female wrestlers when I was a kid. She was one of the first women that could really put on a put on a show. Her and Sherry Martell back in the AWA days. Yeah. Uh, Becky Lynch, Becky Lynch puts on a great program nowadays. She may not be my favorite wrestler, but overall, I mean that woman can wrestle. This would be one hell of a show. Yeah, that'd be a great match. And Phil, yeah. what, do you think? what do you think, Phil? Hey man, any chick who can drive a monster truck has got to be badass, okay? <laughs> and I think Medusa resembles that remark. Uh, you know, I don't know if I could see the old Bexter getting up into the truck. Maybe she could. I don't know. And I seem to remember back in the day. Um, She's the man. She's the man. She's got to get up she, in that truck. Yeah, yeah. she wears the pants, and that, she definitely wears she that pants. Does. In that yes, and, and she does. Yes, and and he wears her clothes. It's a wonderful relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, Miss Michelli, uh, quite a strong gal. I've seen, again, the training sequences for her, too, uh, squatting and everything else. And, uh, yeah, she was the first to be really in one of the really conditioned wrestlers, female wrestlers. Yeah, so, was, and, again, was... international experience, certainly experience in the territories. Yeah. Um, I think she would bring a lot to the game. I don't think she'd be a pushover for Becky. In fact, uh, you know, I think it would be a great contest. Yeah, I used to um, I used to be in contact with uh, um, Medusa, and uh, she would tell me, you know, the worst thing she hated about being champion was so because the WWF was turning at that time into that sexualized all the women type thing, and she'd have to do the cheeky bikini shots and all that stuff, and she hated it. She was like, I- "I'm not built for this. I'm built for wrestling and working out and all that. I'm not a model." You know? Yeah, she she has that tough side to her. And lest we not forget on that that very infamous Monday Nitro where she oh, took yeah. the ladies' title yep. and dropped it right into the circular file. I mean, exactly. you know, that takes some uh, cojones of That's steel true. to do, I think. You know, talk about burning bridges, you know. Definitely. definitely. So. Player, what do you got? What do you got on this one, Player? That's that. I mean, that is a great, great matchup. I mean, when I saw that, it's like, holy crap. That is That's a perfect matchup. You know, Debbie Michelli is was so talented so i mean legitimately a tough woman you know matches up with becky very well on an athletic basis that that's a great match yeah i i I think so too i think it'll be uh they could be a long match i think i think they would probably go at it for about 30 minutes or so they'd put on a great show i think both of them with their wrestling knowledge and becky you know gets overshadowed she's got some knowledge in the ring 
Um, you know, a lot you of slouch, for sure. You wouldn't have known it this past Monday with the uh, last woman standing match because I think 90% of that whole match took place outside the ring with some of the stuff they were doing, which is insane. And just a real quickly cap on that. It's funny how the girls put on that match Monday night. And then we had, I don't know if anybody saw AEW uh, Rampage aired right after Dynamite because of the NCAA basketball being on Friday. Um, they had Sky Blue and Chris Statlander take on Julia Hart. And um, who's the other girl? I forget the other girl's name. But they had a, um, a, a street fight. And it ended with nails in the ring. They did some crazy ass moves, table bumps. Sky Blue is actually bleeding. No um, way. That's the picture behind me right here. I got to watch this then. That's why I put that picture up the other day. Nobody recognized that's Sky sure. Blue. From where was she Blue bleeding? Head. From she, from the top of her head. She got cut open in the table spot early in the match. Oh, hard way, I bet. Yeah, you got to huh? watch it. It's a really, really good match. Um, so, the, oh, Willow Nightingale was uh, Julia yeah. Hardy. She got on top of the announcer's table. Willow Willow Nightingale was going to put her through the table. You know, she reversed it, sky blue, and she did the um, the sunset flip move there. What do they call that when you flip the girl over and Canadian destroyer or something Canadian on the table? Canadian destroyer on okay. the table. Yeah. It broke the table in two. I mean, it, it didn't break the table. Excuse me. So I don't know if it was supposed to break the table, but that was her reaction after it. She was she was hurt. Doing the move, Willow was hurt doing the move. They were checking on them, um, and then they ended up um, going back in the ring. Sky Blue was on top of the ring, and Willow Nightingale grabbed her, put her over like a Samoan drop, and they just went right into the two tables that were obviously set up before. And they put on a hell. Th- of that match. is that sounds incredible. Had the I'm gonna... tack, they had the thumb ta- thumbtacks in the ring. Chris Statlander took took that one. Uh, they did they, they they had they did a really good street fight for women. So I just thought it was funny that Tony Khan. Um, you know, had a street fight match um, right after Raw's, you know, sure. like, match. So it was kind of like they were trying to feed off each other. But they were going tit for tat, no pun intended. Tat, yeah, and um, it was a good match. Uh, I, that's why I, I printed that picture out. Two uh, pictures. I don't know if you can see them right here. That's her screaming after what the the move she did, and uh, she, that's her bleeding on top of the table. So it was a neat match. It was. Well, a, they should all be commended. That's. Uh, I put up, I put a post up on Facebook, which was kind of neat. Um, almost to the day, March 17th, 2021, was Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa the bloodbath for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This one was, what, March 20th? So, two years later, 2024. To the day, they have a match where the girl bleeds, you know, and I and I put up on my post Tony Khan's tweet from January saying 2024 is going to be the new 2021 for AEW. So he's trying to bring back some of the, the 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 good stuff he had back in 2021, and that's what he kicked it off with. And I'm like, okay, I see, I see what he's trying to do now. So you know, maybe he sees that the fans are getting frustrated, you know, with all that. Plus, Mercedes Monet got tons of camera time, um, too much camera time, too much mic time. You know, you could tell that, you know, four million a year, we're gonna see a lot of Mercedes Monet on AEW television. Bruce, well, would you agree with that? <laughs> Everyone thinks you're sleeping in the chat, man. They're like, hey, hey. Do I think no, we're gonna see a lot of Mercedes Monet? I think we're gonna have her shoved down our throats because of the amount of money she's been given. She's oh, yeah. gonna get a Canadian destroyer on the table for that kind yeah. of money. Yeah, I can't wait for her to get hurt. That's gonna be the big deal. What happens oh, then? Maybe I yeah, am yeah. sleeping. That, that the sunglasses help. <laughs> yeah, uh, money. The, money's in the in the chat. He says that was fake blood, fake or not. It was kind of cool. You know what I mean? I don't know if he's referring to Britt Baker or the or his girlfriend there, Sky Blue. She's but, mine, uh, Mike. She's mine. <laughs> <laughs> and she looks like she's ten years old in the pictures I saw with him and mine. <laughs> like, oh god, <laughs> unbelievable, unbelievable. All right, so we got moving on with the women's section here. This one, no doubt, would be a WrestleMania main event. It would probably headline both nights if they could do it. I had to put this in there. Everybody talks about it. China versus Rhea Ripley. Wow. Um, Damn. China as Intercontinental Champion. Rhea Ripley as Champion. Um, I think this would be a match for the ages based on the fact that they're built the same. Um, they wrestle the same, you know. I think this would be just an amazing match. Uh, this was a no-brainer when I was when I was preparing these segments, 
And, uh, you know, we'll go around the room. Phil, what do you think? We'll kick it off with you. China versus Rhea. All right. I'll confess initially to be a little biased. First, I, I did refer to uh, China's biography and how she really buried Walter Kowalski, who was just a wonderful man. So, And then I actually met China, um, of course, many moons ago. And I've met so many of these people had wonderful experiences. Not so with her, you know, not so with her. So... And in fact, I think that even translated on camera in terms of promos. You know, while she might have looked impressive in the ring, I, I don't think her promos were anything hot. Whereas I think Rhea really uh, is is really entrancing on screen with her. And again, that accent's incredible too. Oh, yeah. But from the physical end, I think, you know, uh, I think she's evolved. I, I mean, China was a trailblazer in many ways, but I think Rhea Ripley is a, is is another level beyond now in terms of what we see Aussie, in the Aussie, ring. Aussie. You know, boy, yeah, boy, boy. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm 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 leaning towards Rhea. Yeah. yeah. ESO, Absolutely. what do you got? China, Rhea. What's the betting odds? What do you got? Oof. I got I, I've got Rhea on this. You know, China wanted to become more and more of a diva where Rhea's embracing that that kind of dark look. She uh you know has, has really transformed herself into she still looks amazing, but at the same time she's she's very intimidating. Um I, I think yeah. that I, I don't think China would have stood a chance. China want China interview wise, you got Rhea. I yeah. think uh just overall look wise, I think, and, and I'm not talking physical attraction wise, but I think Rhea's got that more domineering, scary look to her. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to run into Rhea. She, you she like, looks like, you like my that. Ass. You like that ESO, so, don't you? You like that look, don't you? No, nah, well, not 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 usually my not my style for dating, but that girl could. She, uh, you know, she definitely got a good good uh good gimmick there. What do you think, player? What What do you think, China Rhea? Yeah, I'm I'm going with Rhea all the way. I think Rhea is far superior in terms of you know ring ability, promo ability. I mean, China is kind of a freak of nature, but um, yeah. And I heard a lot of the things that that Phil was referring to uh, yeah. about you know how she talked badly about uh, Killer Kowalski Walter. And by all accounts, I mean I've heard so many people speak the world of that man. In yeah. fact, she's probably the only person that I've ever heard speak of that man in a negative light. I mean, not only a legend in the ring, but just a, a sweet a, guy, a great yeah. guy and really, you know, devoted to professional wrestling. So yeah, I, as, you know, I don't think teacher, much of though, her. as a teacher, he was pretty strict. He was yeah. a old school guy. So that could have rubbed her the wrong way as well. well uh, you know, one, our, uh, our fellow, uh, um, uh, not good podcaster, uh, Brittany Brown, yeah. Uh, trained under Walter Kowalski, yeah. the Boston yeah. Dad girl. Yeah. yeah, again, you know, thinks the world of thought the world of the man. Yeah. Um. So no, I I'm going with Rhea. Rhea is a mega star. I think I think we even have we have not seen her uh, her peak yet. I think I think Rhea you after know. her outfit at Elimination Chamber. Um. I think the world will be watching what these two women wear into the ring because China <laughs> was no stranger for showing off her body, as we know, appearing in Playboy and all that stuff. I then um, I have that issue. But, but her her in ring uh, attire towards the end of her career was very very risque, and that's probably what she had to sell because you know she was built pretty good. She had an amazing figure. She you know she was a beast, and uh, at that era, the Attitude Era and everything, she was she fit right in. Scantily clad wrestling men, Jeff Jarrett winning the Intercontinental Title, and then Rhea Ripley and her uh, crazy outfits are just more updated. Uh, but what she wore uh, for Elimination Chamber basically was talked about more than the match that she had um, because some of the camera shots they had to edit on Peacock <laughs> uh, because as the match wore on, you know, things got sweatier and tidier and all that stuff. So uh, that's one thing that I was thinking of, like, what would they wear to the ring? That might be huge. So, all right, moving on. Here we go. Another women's one. Um, I'll just throw this one right up here. It's WrestleMania season, so why not? Wendy Richter, Charlotte Flair, uh, two obviously world champions. I think their bodies match up the same. I'm looking at strength. I'm looking at um, the Flair and Wendy Richter when she won the title. She was all 80s out. She was Cindy Lauper, um, his sidekick and all that stuff. So real, I'll go around the room. Phil, I'll start with you. What do you think, Charlotte Flair and Wendy Richter? You know, as much as nostalgic as I am for Wendy Richter, and as she really was one of the first uh, glamorous um, 
back then we called them lady wrestlers before we called them divas or WWE superstars. Um, you know, and, and her gravitas, of course, came from her situation with the rock and wrestling connection. So that does carry still a lot of heft, too. But, you know, you cannot discount Charlotte's athleticism is just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, innovator of a great new submission that came from Charlotte, that figure eight. Yeah. Incredible. Someone so tall with such, with a with quite the gymnastics background. That's that's sure. impressive in its own right, too. And uh, just again, the the genetics that are that we're talking about here, the yeah. stuff that she has at that cellular level, you know, from her father is just sure. unbelievable. So I'd give the uh, I'd give the tip of the cap to Charlotte. I think it would be a pretty good contest. Both are in great right. condition, but uh, sure. we'd have to give it to to Charlotte. The ESO, queen. What, ESO, what do you think, Charlotte Flair, Wendy Richter, nineteen eighty five, Wendy Richter, WrestleMania? You know what I mean? What do you think? Yeah. I, I still have to go with Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair is right really? now the most accomplished. Okay. Charlotte Flair is the most accomplished woman wrestler that we have today. Uh, I mean, how many titles does she have? Seventeen now. Yep. But uh, you know, she's, she's Wendy quick, Richter. I look I, at her her career. In my opinion, it was so short. From the time I started watching wrestling till she was gone was less than two years. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, the thing about Wendy Richter though, she was she was in shape. She was a fitness guru. And they showed that off in those WrestleMania promos, her running yeah. on the treadmill, lifting weights. You know, that was unheard of back then. You know what I mean? Yeah. Play, what, do you, play, what do you think of that one? Well, I mean, again, you got now you got uh, the nostalgia factor with, you know, Wendy Richter winning the title from Moolah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, I uh, mean, Charlotte Flair, holy crap. You know, I think she may be the greatest of all time. Um, good match, but yeah. Charlotte takes that one. Yeah, there you go. Well, All right. Well, you have you to look at it, look at it this way because sure. what was it? Less than a year year after WrestleMania, the what, how old was Moolah? She had to be in her fifties. Wrestled oh, yeah. wrestled her and pinned her down and took the title from her. Yeah. Well, you know that was I mean? that was logistics backstage and all that stuff. But, spider Lady. You know, yeah. I yeah, mean, they wanted her. Yeah. She, yeah, she but if you look at that match, she she really wrapped. You know, she Moolah controlled her through that. Yeah. I love so, I love how you mentioned I love how you mentioned Mula because here's my next one. Uh, this is a tag match. Trish and Lita versus Fabulous Mula. And can anybody guess who her oh, partner man. is? May Young. <laughs> there you go. May Young. Look at May her. Young. She's a stunner. What are you kidding me? Look at that. She's absolutely breathtaking. And for, for a lady that age, I mean, you you think of Mil you think of May Young as an old woman, and then you see her in her heyday here. She had good looks, and she could wrestle. So there you go, Mula and May Young taking on Trish and Lita. Play a hit us with the who do you think is going to get that one? Nobody wins that one. That that's a toss up. I mean, you got Mula and May Young, two of the best ever. You know, yeah. tough as nails. Uh, I mean, and and man, look at May Young. She's breathtaking. I mean, that picture was taken. I think it was taken uh, during the uh, the uh, prohibition days, what yeah. late twenties. <laughs> but um, you know, way before she gave birth to the hand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. imagine but, that. But yeah, no, I mean that that's a toss up. That's a great, but that's another great match. Yeah, I was actually stunned by that photo. I was like, wow. I mean, wow, that was, that was when she was in her prime. Uh, Mr. President, what do you think? What do you got in this one? Well, you know, if Rodney Dangerfield were here looking at her, he'd say, you must have been something before electricity. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at May Young. May Young looks like a, I, I don't want to, I hate to say, he looks like a, she looks like a man. She looks like it, somebody in drag, somebody in drag back then. Yeah. I mean, and even then she had the title. I mean, that must have been a hell of a title back then to have it with her picture on it and so forth. Um you know what yeah, I mean? But absolutely. You know, and, and, and here's what we can consider. Uh, the time frame through which yeah. um, these ladies lived. And, you know, anyone who's come up through the Depression or World yeah. War II and that era really, you know, tends to be a, a, a stronger character, you know, yeah. uh, you know, a product of, of, of their place and time. And, and I think those two, Mula and um, May, certainly have that toughness that I think transcends any era and, yep. and any style. Yeah. So I, I would give it, to, I would give it to them. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Jason moaning in the uh, chat says Mueller and May, they weren't cover girls. They were ball busters. Exactly. And, uh, 
<laughs> B40 got May Young got 3D'd by the Dudleys at the age of 80. I remember that. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Through the table. Through the table. Yeah. They took Luke, a bubble bomb through the table. Loose Unbelievable. Cannon's the, loose Cannon's in there, and he's talking about May Young could take all take the whole other three. So maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, so what do you got, ESO? Real what do you got right. for these? Listen, sure. a, when you put this graphic up, I, I immediately i i i done a i did a paper on May Young when I was back in college, so oh, I recognized wow. the picture okay. right wow. away. That woman was Sweet. the toughest wrestler out there, uh, yeah. tougher than Mula. The stuff that that woman went through. Now you put her with Mula, I don't yeah. think that they're going to lose to anybody even today. So right. Right. I hate yeah. to say it because Trish Stratus is probably my favorite wrestler of all time, and yeah. man, Lita, Lita with the whale tail. I mean. I don't ever want to root against them, but man, I think that I have to here. I did, I kind of uh, did that one for you, Bruce, because I knew that's your era, Trish and Lita. So I was I, like, yeah, you but know. I got to go with the. You know, how could I go against Mula and May Young on that? I mean, those those women are tough as hell. What eighty year old women do you do you think right. Trish Stratus and Lita are going to be in the ring at eighty? No, 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 no. And I think that's all based on what we're eating nowadays and the food that's processed and everything now. So it's a different generation. So. Uh, I don't see them living to 80. I, don't, I mean, they may, but they're not going to be wrestling. They're not going to be taking table bumps like uh, May yeah. Young did and all that stuff. So, yeah, you know, I, can tell you. I vividly if, if remember the... meeting Mula, and what I remember of her was the smell of cigarette. Oh, yeah. Mula? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. She, seems you know, like that, she seems like that aunt that would come over every Thanksgiving and just smell up the place. Like when she came <laughs> in the room, everybody would leave. What, the palm walls? <laughs> yeah, palm walls. Unfiltered. <laughs> You know, if you know that mall store hot topic, do you, do yes. you guys have that anyway? Oh, yeah. Well, if that were around in the time of Mula and May, they'd look pretty fetching themselves oh, if they I'm could sure get old. Would. Some, I'm as sure. as Bruce would say, the whale tail and the fishnets. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't you right. see that? Here's my here's my here's my last women's matchup. I kind of took this modern day star, um, and what her character is now. I got Tony Storm going up against Mildred Burke, um. This one was a no-brainer. Mildred Burke looks like she could take care of some business back in the day. Um, and she did. Um, so, you know, and you got timeless Tony Storm trying to go back to that era. Um, not necessarily as a wrestler, but as a movie star and so forth. But I kind of combined the two. And uh, I figured Tony Storm is a pretty decent wrestler. She uh, she kicked ass in the UK and all that before she got over here and got all, um, you know, modernize uh, so to speak and all that stuff but real quickly real quickly we'll go around the room eso what do you think of these two uh i, I actually tony storm is one of the highlights of aew but yeah. i gotta go with mildred burke there you go player who do you got in this one mildred burke all the way all yeah, the way mildred burke. what do you got there phil well, I actually think that Tony Storm could time travel the way she is right now and probably go back in time. But I think she'd come back pretty quickly after meeting Mildred Burke. So yeah. I'm going with I'm going with Mildred Burke. All the legendary accounts of her are, you know, they're there for a reason, you know? Yeah. Amazing. Test of time right I'm, there. I'm still taking timeless Tony Storm just because I love the character and I love the I love what she's doing. And I hope Tony kind of oh, I do too. Up. Hope he yeah. doesn't screw it up. So we got Battle of the Boardrooms here, a match that Probably should have been made back in the day, but I combined a little twist in it. We have the current Vince McMahon taking on 1987's Ted Turner with Mr. President Donald Trump as the guest referee. Love it. Look at that. What do you guys think? Who do you got? Just tell me all right now. Vinnie Bruce, Mac. what do you got? You got Vinnie got? Mac there. He, you know, Vinnie Mac? Think, I've never seen Ted in a weight room. And yeah, uh, I would, I've yeah. seen Vince some, take some crazy blows. This would be an illustrious boardroom match, though. You know what I mean? So you never know. Phil, who do you got? Well, I, I know that uh, President Trump is pretty faithful uh, and true to his friends. And I know that he and and, uh, <laughs> and Vinnie Mac are, are really tight. And, well, you know, aside from the fact that uh, the president did clothesline Vince outside the ring in quite a stellar That's move a few right. years ago. Move, yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, I think I think perhaps Ted's uh, marriage to Jane Fonda might have weakened him up a little bit. So we're going with Vinnie Mac. There you go. Play Who do you got in this one? Well, I mean, the, the the current Vince McMahon looks like Wayne Newton on crack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy was on the cover, I think. With, Phil, was it Muscle and Fitness or Flex? It was Muscle and Fitness, I believe. Yeah. All right. I, I, mean, mean, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, the guy has been devoted to weight training for years. Vince McMahon in a squash match. Yeah. 
I, I agree. I agree. So moving on here, we got um, Battle of the Bodybuilders. I would say Bobby Lashley versus Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. And I can see the difference in the weightlifting between, obviously, Bobby Lashley and Tony Atlas. Tony Atlas, to me, looks bulkier, more muscular. Lashley looks very toned. Phil, you're a weightlifting expert. Who do you got in this one? You know, I appreciate Lashley's amateur wrestling background, his army credentials, and everything else, his MMA stuff. You know, Tony Atlas came up at a different time and and actually was quite a good amateur wrestler, not to mention bodybuilder. And beyond being built for uh, show, Tony is built to go, okay? One of the two people that Ric Flair said that at any point could walk over to a bench cold and rep out 500 pounds. And to this day, Tony looks really good. And, uh, you know, and I'm not sure how well Bobby's going to fare in, in, in years to come. Lashley's a very good guy, too, and that does count for a lot and a great athlete. So I see it being a nip and tuck battle, and uh, I don't see any resolution necessarily, you know. Yeah. Um, Tony, again, for his time, way ahead and exceeded sure. the field of competitors. So yeah. uh, maybe the nod to Tony. ESO, who do you got in this one? Atlas I Lashley. Disagree. I got to I got to disagree. Bobby Lashley's got the you know the the MMA background going for him. Um the only the only thing that Tony might have going for him is uh the lack of brain cells up top so he might not realize that he's hurt. <laughs> Whoa, and he can't keep on going. Oh. But, uh, Bobby Lashley uh, all the way. Bobby Lashley is one hell of an athlete. You realize that guy's already is he 46, 47 years old? Yeah, he's up there, yeah. And I mean he's a monster. He is yeah. he's a little bit bigger than Tony. Um yeah. I, I think, you know, I, I think it's going to be a close one, honestly. But uh, I got to, I got to go with with Bobby Lashley. Nice player. Who do you got in this one? I, I'm going to go with they wrestled the the, the time limit. And wow. that, remember back in the day, every once in a while, and there was no rhyme or reason to it. Most times, time limits would be a draw. But every once in a while, the referee would actually give a decision. And of course, it always went to the baby face. Oh yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to give. Lashley by by referee's decision. Very close match, though. Wow, nice, nice. Hey, here's a good one that would be interesting: Rey Mysterio versus Mil Mascaris. Playa, Mil Mascaris, your generation. What do you think? He, he's got to win. He doesn't sell. I mean, but <laughs> what a match it would be, though. Yeah, Phil, who yeah. do you got? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just typing in the chat. It's Mil Mascaris versus who? Uh, Mysterio. Rey Mysterio. Oh, um, yeah. I echo Benny's sentiments. Not only would Mill uh, not sell, but he always forgot English when it came to the uh, him <laughs> losing, you know? And it would, it would we say, no no yob, no yob, no, he yeah, would say. Yeah. No jobbing. Yeah. ESL, so what do you over. think? What do you think, Bruce? Well, I mean, I got to agree with the other two because there was not a card that Mill Miscaris was on that Mill Miscaris did the job. Wow. Okay. Anna, do we ever really see him lose if we think about it, right? Wow. How, 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 not how, in America. He, yeah. he, he was coming to the territory. He was not putting his shoulders down. Wow. Not for anybody. I think he I lost think there were a couple of Kent Graham, couple. I think, by countdown. Yeah, I was wow. going to say there were a couple of countdowns. Now, here's a match I think that would take over the scientific uh, realm of things. Bob Backlund versus Chad Gable. I think this would be a great match wrestling-wise. Um, they would put on a hell of a show, suplex city, backland stamina, all that stuff. Chad Cable has shown us that he can go a few rounds. Uh, play, what do you think of that one? Yeah, absolutely a great match, but backland all the way. Backland all the way. Phil, who you got in this one? You know, even though even the I, I put backland over Brock earlier, here's the thing. You know, again, growing up on the farm, backland had a hard life. His father was an alcoholic. In yeah. fact, his back is strangely fortified, stronger than most, because he was often left on in his crib on his back for a while. So wow. part of his spine actually has a condition where it kind of fused. You notice how upright Bob always was yeah. Yeah. in that thoracic area? That's actually because, as a kid, I don't want to say he was neglected, but he was often left in his crib mm-hmm. for a long time. Right. Anyway, and that's the last time his shoulders have been down for any significant time. He's made up for it since then. Right. And again, given that hard scrabble kind of farm life, that tough deal... Backlund's got a grittiness, uh, an incredible toughness, a tenacity. Right. I'm going with Backlund. Yeah, excellent. ESO, who do you got in that one? I don't think we've seen the best of what Chad Gable is going to bring to us yet. So I uh, I think that uh, over time this might change. But right now you obviously have to give it to Backlund. Um, yeah. 
but Chad Gable, he's got a he's got a great great charisma. He's got a great look to him. I mean, the, the sky's the limit for that guy when he starts to break through. Yeah, Joe Will said it really needs to be Bob Backlund versus Kurt Angle. I agree with that one. That would be really good. Oh, that would be a real good match. Um, the funny part with Chad Gable is I think I see that storyline developing where he's going to help Zami Zayn win the title, unfortunately, over uh, Gunther, and then he's going to take the title because that'll be his promise to Zayn that I'll give you a title shot if you can help me beat. I could see kind of that storyline going. I hope that's not the storyline. I'm not saying that it is, yeah. but – by my feeling is that Chad's going to help Sami Zayn, uh, maybe do like an almost win and all that stuff. And then I don't yeah. know. But I still somehow in the realm of things in the next few months, see Chad Gable as the next intercontinental title. I think he deserves it. And I think he's, he'd be a great representative of that title. I, th uh, I think once right. he turns face, he's going to be big. You know, that, yeah. That shoot that he did was so was getting over as a heel. So it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Uh, we got this one. How about this? I thought of this one late in the day. Okada versus Anoki. There's a, there's a, there's one. Benny, who do you think would would win that one? Anoki's uh, kind of like a, a, a Japanese version of Moscaris, though, isn't he? He didn't he didn't want to lose to anybody. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, Okada, you know, great wrestler. I, I, a draw. I'm gonna pick a draw. I think it'd be an ego, big ego match. That's what I think. Uh, Phil, who do you got in this one? You know, Inoki does have a lot of, uh, you know, he started training with jiu-jitsu back in the day, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and everything um, before. I'm not sure about Okada's uh, legitimate martial arts background. So Inoki has that. Plus, uh, he probably had to answer to the Yakuza, Yakuza back in the day. Um, and uh, and I agree. Inoki uh, was not one to uh, put his shoulders down for just anybody. So uh, I would go with Inoki as well. He's a legend. Yeah, so who do you got in this one? No, it has to be. A, I gotta agree with the uh, the panel. It's a it's an Oki. If anything, you'd have Okada go in, get a cheap win in the beginning on his tour in, and then lose right. on his way out. So, yeah, you know, I agree. With sometimes that one, how yeah. those Japanese tours worked. Yep, I agree with that one too. It looks like Anoki would kill him. They had the uh, the chat pretty much all uh, rounding, all Anoki on that one. Yep, Maria Anoki, we got you. Loose Ken, Jason, everybody, good stuff. All right, my last one. Battle of the Giants, Andre versus Omos. <laughs> now, they're billing Omos is like almost as tall as Andre, but definitely not the weight. Uh, obviously, Omos is a freak of nature at that size. Um, what do you think? This is this could has the potential to be a very serious matchup because Andre may not look like Omos muscular wise, but he's noted for his strength. He had really inner strength, like he was a strong guy. Uh, Phil, why don't you take us with this one? What do you think? Andre versus Omos. Well, you know, uh, favorites aside, I still would go with Andre. Andre had tremendous natural strength, as you say. Incredible pulling power, too. Right. And, you know, Ken Patera, who knows a thing or two about strength, okay, yep. felt that if Andre, with some training and and some enhancements, would, would have shattered all records, particularly in um, the deadlift. and. Right. uh he just had amazing uh, natural strength. Sure. And, you know, that toughness, too. And, again, his was glandular, whereas almost was a combination of glandular and maybe, maybe more. Right. Um, again, again, I'll harken back. Andre was a, a farm kid in France, too. Sure. This yep. is kind of weird. We have all these people raised on farms, which we really can't <laughs> say anymore. But, um, you know, and, and given Andre's capacity to drink, I mean, you know, yeah. what's going to slow him down, you know? Exactly. Uh, Andre all the way. Yeah. Bruce, who you got in this one? What do you think? I, I got to go with my man, Andre. I have to agree with Phil. Love yeah. almost. I think I, I think they're using almost almost wrong, but that's my own opinion. I, I think he needs to be booked more of a monster and be undefeated, kind of like Andre, to, to make him a legend. But yeah, you, know, you got to say Andre. Andre was – he was the eighth wonder of the world. Uh, right. we're, we are 30 years since the man passed away. Yeah. And we still talk about him. Yep, unbelievable. Player, who do you got in this one? After 137 cans of beer, four bottles of wine, and 27 <laughs> shots of tequila, Andre still wins. <laughs> yeah, I think, yep. I mean, I I was shocked. Um, I remember almost debuting, what was it, WWE Underground or whatever it was? Oh, he yeah. Was there, ripping everybody up, and I, and I go, and they didn't make him look that big. They just, he went in there, he was hunched over wrestling these guys and all that. 
And then when he stood up, I'm like, I go, this guy might be the same size height wise as Andre. He's huge. He's definitely, I think he's seven foot two. So yeah, and, legit. They, and, they, a... and they bill him as that. So, and he's a tall guy um, and a big guy. And I don't know where they found him, but they found him. And, you know, I think they should use him. But, you know, with a guy that size, you know, you've seen it when he was in NXT and early WWE. He's been off TV for a while. What's there for him to do in wrestling? Because um, that shtick of, you know, the Andre the Giant character where you never lose and I defeat everybody, that's out the window now. Like, what does he do? Like, where, yeah. where did he go from there? You know what I mean? So it, it's a tough it's a tough situation. And this is where I think the WWE fails with their writing capacity. You know, they hire these great writers off TV and, um, you know, their writing staff is pretty well paid and, you know, they make a lot of money to come up with these ideas. But, you know, you get this guy almost who, you know, they could they could do something with him, but they don't. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Almost should do something. They kind of I mean, like you just said, though, they, they really they 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 made him very vincible. Yeah, you know, they, they, they didn't build him properly. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I agree. So yeah. What Kind of Breeze brought in as a heel, basically. I think the only way he can turn it around is maybe uh, change his stripes, so to speak, and maybe uh, come to the the side of good, maybe, and build him up. I mean, it's hard to generate sympathy for someone of that size, but, you know, maybe have a lot of people gang up on him. Maybe kind of build him up that way, you know, overcoming the numbers odds or something. But uh, I think there's a future for him. I think he can be creative. He's, you know, I I think he's still learning. He's still young and just really still getting his legs under him, so... There could be a future for him. There should be a future for him, too. Otherwise, it'd be very much a waste. Jow Will has a match. MJF versus the Haiti Kid in a ladder match. <laughs> nice. well, I'll give the height and the leverage to the Haiti Kid. No, I won't. Um, that is funny, though. And that boy from Massachusetts, Fox O. Willie, sends the Haiti Kid all the way. Yeah. The Haiti Kid with the win on that one. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But uh, yeah, I'm just going through the chat here. Jason, ha- everyone had Okada. That's amazing, too. Really? Uh, yeah, almost a mid cut. Andre all the way. Andre in his prime when George Allen wanted to sign him with the Redskins. Remember, oh, that? Yeah, remember that? Yeah, remember that story. But uh, nonetheless, that's all we got, guys. Uh, any any final thoughts on this? Any any other matches come to your head at all, or you guys half asleep, or what's going on? No, no, no. You know, as much as we joke about MJF here, he's he's really great. You know, right. he really is. Uh, he's really good. He I really saw, is. I just saw a headline that uh, AEW took his merch off the site. Really? I don't know how, yeah, yeah wow. I don't know how I don't know how I haven't been on the site, so I haven't checked it. But if that's true, I don't know if this is just a work. Um because it's most likely a work because you know that I they, they so. would be doing a clearance of his merchandise if they were yeah. getting rid of him, just like they did with CM Punk. Well, I think, you're right. I, think I think you're right, Bruce. I think they learned by the Mercedes Monet debut that we, that was the worst kept secret in the world. So if MJF is staying with AEW or going to WWE, it's gonna be the best kept secret in the world. Um, to the point where you know nobody, he's not showing up. They're not going to drop any media uh, bombs on this. I think when MJF returns, wherever he's at, it's going to be a huge shock. There's going to be no buildup to it, like Mercedes Monet. So I know we're all a little bit connected in the industry, you know, one yeah. in different ways. Has everybody noticed that there is a lot less leaking out of WWE over the last, I would say, six months? I mean, I'm hearing yeah. a lot less rumors come through. A yeah. lot less. Uh, a lot less stuff. So. I, th- I think that's the CM Punk thing. That's why. Um, even, even though that was a successful return, you knew he was going to be there. They were leaking that stuff. But I don't mean they were leaking the fact that CM Punk was me in Chicago. They leaked to the media and all the dirt sheets that CM Punk is not going to be there. He's not, he's not in town. He's not going to be there. And I kept saying to myself, the more they keep feeding the dirt sheets of him saying he's not going to be there, to me was that reverse psychology. He's going to be there. And mm-hmm. I think the WWE learned their lesson on that too. So, yeah, I, I've noticed that, Bruce. There's been a lot less uh, leaking to the dirt sheets. Meltzer's been pretty vague too, if you've noticed. Um, if you follow him and all that stuff. I've been wrong. It's very, yeah, <laughs> and wrong too, but just vague statements like, you know, um, uh, what was one today about um, the injury to somebody? Um, I forget who. Oh, um, no, it was MJF. And no word on his injury. Okay, no word on his injury. And and, that, and I think the end quote was that MJF is keeping everything 
it, with him and not telling anybody what's going on. He's off social media. He's not on AEW and all that stuff. So I think um, I think they're learning the lesson. The age of social media, you know, they tried to use social media to their advantage, but it seems to be backfiring now because everyone's catching on to what's going on. You know, everyone's silence is golden, man. It is yeah. in some respects. Yeah. You know, there's an old saying that says. Uh, the more he spoke of his honor, the quicker we counted our spoons, you yeah. know? So <laughs> it's kind of like that. That is true. That is true. Just checking the chat real quick before hey, we go. Wait, Jared, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Go. go ahead, Bruce. Oh, no, I was going to say that Michael Hayes versus Jericho that Jason's putting out there. That was pretty. Oh, uh, yeah, that was a good that's one. That's a great one, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's the whole music, cool. rock and roll, you know. Can we get free yeah, birds. Two we singers, get, just, one. Just, just to be careful, just to confirm, we have the Freebird version of Michael Hayes, right? Not Doc Hendricks. So we got <laughs> we, got the, we got the Freebird version of Michael Hayes versus Jericho. Yeah, the Bad Street out. USA version. Yeah. Georgia nineteen, yeah, exactly, or Texas uh, nineteen eighty uh, two or three version. Yeah, yeah. Jason Moaning, Randy Savage versus The Miz. That's not bad. Mm. Randy Savage. I don't know. A couple of egos going at it right there, big time. You know what I mean? Of course, again, the entrances would... I think Randy's entrance would be much longer if he came out with Miss Elizabeth carrying, you know, him on the throne and all that stuff. That'd be a long that'd be a long deal. But, um, How many black eyes would the Miz get? <laughs> George Steele versus Otis. Ooh. There you go. George Steele versus Otis. George the Animal Steele versus Otis. Or versus Bull Curry. How about that? Bull Curry. Wow. There you go. Nice. So, uh, John nice. Wilson says the Hayes versus Jericho should be a hair match. Oh, definitely, definitely got to be a hair match inside a steel cage too. At that, you know what I mean. Good stuff, nonetheless. So it looks like we are way out of time, went over our time limit, but uh, the referee didn't ring the bell. Thanks a lot, ESO. Where's Tony Schiavone to yell? We are desperately out of time, which as he used to on Monday Nitro. <laughs> but don't worry, folks. We're going to be staying with you until the end of this match. I mean, yeah. we've got ten minutes of overrun. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's getting ridiculous too. Remember, does anybody remember that Raw was always like till eleven oh five? Remember that yep, it was yep. always yeah. You, you knew it. I mean, they set it up like that. The way that AEW presents it now, it's just ridiculous. It's like, don't go anywhere, folks. We're 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 scheduled to go all the way. We're we're not going to leave this match until it's over. And they're like, okay, it's nine oh one. What what time's it going to end? It's usually I think they go to like nine ten now. So yeah. But whatever, it is what it is. They're trying, they're trying, and it's funny they're they're preempted big time this weekend with the NCAA uh, college hoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's everybody's brackets doing? Yeah, Dayton screwed me. Oh my god, that was a huge one. Uh, How about them Holy Cross girls? Are they gonna? Are they gonna? uh... Oh, I haven't checked the girls bracket yet. Caitlin Clark's playing tomorrow night. The winner, UC Martin, and somebody else. Yeah, Uh, she's playing tomorrow night, seven thirty. I think that game is whoever they're playing. Because I think that game was uh, that game might have been last night, so I got to check that. But uh, the Holy Cross game. did win last night. They ha- they are advancing, as far as I know. And uh, yeah, I thought they were coming out your way. Maybe they will be soon. Yeah, you guys got the final four. Uh, I think you get the Sweet Sixteen at uh, the Garden, don't you? TD Gardens hosting the last right before the final four. I think right so, before, and they, I can tell you the games at TD Garden determine the final four. So I think they have two games in the court in the semifinals that go to the final four. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. So yeah, Worcester used to host a few too yeah, back Worcester in the day. Yeah, but TD Gardens rocking when that stuff happens. Everybody comes in town for that. So, that's well, I'll be at an indie show tomorrow night, so I'm pretty yeah. stoked about that. Yeah, um, I'll get my wrestling. Look at that. Play. What do you got on tap? What's on tap here for the weekend? And uh, you get some. Well, stuff. I mean, hopefully we get to do our true crime episode on the Menendez brothers on Monday. But uh, one other thing I want to throw out there, and, and the reason why I'm not really following the final four is I am fascinated by this um whole deal with uh shohei otani that oh, yeah, uh, you where, that, yeah. you know he, the interpreter uh, yeah the, the you know somehow four and a half million dollars went out of shohei's account to a bookie in california and at first the bookie said well shohei you know paid my my gambling debts and then yeah. later on in the day the you know uh, otani's lawyer said no it was theft so uh yeah who knows theft? what's going on I got to, I mean, something, something's not right there because what was Hall of Famer Pete Rose involved in this? <laughs> but I mean, how does, how does an interpreter make the kind of money where you're going to run up a four and a half million dollar debt? Well, I, yeah, enough or not. And I do believe with Otani and all the guys, Suzuki and all those players, part of their contract is to have an interpreter. 
part of their salary goes to the interpreter, from what I understand. Yeah, I mean, but how how much they make, they're not making nearly as much as the ball player, but yeah, four and a no. half million dollars. Yeah, that's like paying the bad boy two million bucks to you know get rid of this bat that's fully loaded with uh, cork and all that stuff. So and you know, go I, get I, the bat I, extender. This, this <laughs> that's the old joke. Epic proportions, though. Yeah. What do you What do you think, Bruce? So Tani guilty, innocent? What? Oh, well, we'll get to see uh, how it uh, how it pans out, but hey. It, we all know that people bet on sports. Uh, professionals oh, yeah. bet on themselves all the time. Most of them are smart enough to do it through a third party, though. Yeah, exactly. And he's from you know. I I, I just know from watching people with it with the gambling on pool and just seeing stuff. You know, there's always oh, there's always a side hustle. Breaking news here: Maria Davis is getting ready to celebrate her birthday tomorrow. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday! Shout out. She got All wine right. glasses emoji. She's got presents. Uh, are, we supposed, are we supposed to send her something? What's going on? What a on blessing here? she is. I think huh? I just she has a nice Facebook page. I just followed it, Maria. So check that out. Um, but I didn't know that. Happy birthday, Maria Davis. What a day. Oh, what a wonderful I put gift. That out for on us. my what a day page. I do birthday shout outs on my what a day page. So I'll have to put that out there. That's unbelievable. Good stuff there. Thank you for telling us, Maria. Happy birthday. Um happy 24th have- birthday, Maria. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say, do, do we still are we at that that phase of life? Do we stop asking how old they are, or what do we? You do? never ask a woman her her weight yeah. or her age. Weight or age, really? exactly. But yeah, you go on social media, and that's all they have is weight and age on. There. <laughs> and none of it is now, accurate, I'm sure. I'm like, okay, <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, but ha- happy birthday, Maria Davis. That is awesome, awesome, awesome. You're great. Contributor to um, oh, absolutely. Always the power channel, La always Familia. Very dedicated You're person. Part of the Monty family. I absolutely. think. Uh, I think I'm. I want to arrange Maria to come on. What a day! What do you guys think of that? Absolutely. We'll have, come on, we'll, awesome. have come on, we'll have her come on. the What a Day with Joe Lowry show on Wednesday. That's shown exclusively here on the Monty and the Power Channel. He'd be a great guest. Yeah. But uh, Bruce, what do you got going on this weekend? Oh, this weekend I've got a lot of bartending. I'm going to spend the next two nights at uh, the, the local the local bar bartending. So uh, I'm not going nice. to see much over the weekend. You're going to go go home all smelly, right? Smelling like oh, booze yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. And Phil, you got an indie show tomorrow night? Yeah, I'm going to see Enzo, Mr. Anderson slash Kennedy, and a, ah, a group of others. You. That's awesome. Yeah, it should be that's- fun. Get yeah, a little I'm, table set up there. I, I hope no one puts my, me through. I am going to my first Midwest indie show tomorrow. Knoxville, night. right? Yeah, Madhouse Wrestling. We had Luke on, the owner of uh, – he's called the co-conspirator of Madhouse Wrestling. He's a great guy. I had him on the show on, when, uh, on Wednesday night right after Benny was on. And uh, this is going to be a wild thing. We have There's a tag team, two girls who've been – Itching to wrestle these two guys, and I think they're finally going to get their shot. So intergender it's, in Iowa. It's really not. You could say it's intergender, but it, the tag team is a girl versus yeah. the tag team guys. So I'm going to get some shots of that. I might even go Facebook Live for a couple of times, but uh, definitely do some promo work down there. Get a get a hold of the wrestlers and talk to them and stuff. And it's my first Midwest indie show, so I'm looking forward to it. Enjoy. You might be their announcer, man. It's been the, it's been uh, it's being held at the countryside wedding venue. Um, you got to understand it down here in southern Iowa. They have a lot of barns, so to speak. They're make they're they're, they're built like barns. They look like barns, but they use uh, them for uh, <laughs> weddings and all this. But it's all spruced up. It's all nice. It's glass. So you're sitting on the third hay, hay bale to the yeah, left, third or hay okay. bale. Uh, these guys are bringing in, they they don't serve food. They don't serve food. So they're bringing in a food truck and, uh, they ship all the booze in and they want to make sure all the fans drink all the booze and stuff. So it's, it's kind of, it's my first Midwest show. So I don't know what to expect. Me and baby cakes are driving down. It's a good little ride. It's about 60 miles away. So, uh, I got to take a little trip tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night to get over there. So. It's going to be fun. So Sick stay travels, tuned. Man. Yeah. Check out my Facebook page and stuff. I'll be uh, sh- throwing stuff up on there and uh, Madhouse Wrestling in Knoxville. So that'd be good stuff. Um, yes. Ja Will, Iowa Hawkeyes versus Iowa State Cyclones. Ja Will, I don't know. Is that is that doable in the brackets? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, the, see I, I'm assuming he's talking about the men's because the girls are. Uh, the girls are uh, the Iowa State. Uh, you got to understand, folks. Iowa Hawkeyes, their biggest rival is Iowa State. Um, and when I say biggest rivals, 
it it's cutthroat down here. If you say Iowa State, they don't talk to you. Um, up north, west, if you're a, if you're a Hawkeyes fan, they don't talk to you. It's it's pretty bad down here. Uh, when you, Saturdays, the places are shut down when games are on football games for Hawkeyes. It's you know that is it. It's it's their time. It's their time to to celebrate. So and, and Joe, just as I thought. Yeah. Holy Cross Crusaders are playing your Iowa Hawkeyes. Okay, Dang. so Holy Cross and UT Mart. So Holy Cross beat UT Mart. So that'll be yep. Saturday, 7 30. Oh, they're going in the afternoon? Three o'clock. Yeah. Oh man, they moved it up. It was, that uh, was originally scheduled for 7 30. Wow, three o'clock. So So my team versus yours, I guess. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. You know? We'll see. We're yeah. a long we're a long shot, of course, but hey. You, have you seen Caitlin Clark play yet? Only bit, only snippets, only she's snippets. But uh, she's got fades of Larry Bird in her with that jumper. Absolutely, um, she's got this great fadeaway, three point fadeaway that she's just. I think she shoots like eighty five percent. It's unbelievable. You don't think it's going? She shoots from half court. Yeah, she's, she's that strong. She is an unbelievable basketball player. Bruce, you've seen her play, right? You've seen some action. I've seen her, her a bunch of times. She's un- yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. they even had her at the NBA halftime uh, or the NBA uh, three point. Contest thing with uh, Steph Curry, they had her doing stuff. Yep, and she got a commercial out with Subway and all that stuff now. So she owned uh, all uh, all state insurance or something like that. Yeah, she's, hottest, she's getting big. The hottest card right now out there in uh, yeah. in trading is Caitlin Clark's uh, autographs. Really? No wow. Oh, okay. And she's always signing after the games and stuff too. So that's amazing right there. I, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, she could declare herself for the draft. So there was rumors around here that she was going to play another year, but uh, she said no to that. She's going right to the WNBA. So, you know, people argue about the WNBA and they, they talk about how, you know, it's uh, how bad it is and how the NBA supports yep. it and stuff, but it's only going to take, you look at UFC. It only took yep. those couple of women athletes. You look at WWE, those couple uh, of women absolutely. athletes that really all of a sudden all eyes are on those women. And yeah. The WNBA needs something like that. And, you know, I'm not going to say Caitlin Clark is the answer, but if we could get more women coming in with that type of of hype behind them, maybe we could see the WNBA actually turn into something too. Definitely, definitely, definitely. All right, folks, we are way out of time here. I want to thank everybody for tuning in uh, to Wrestling Remembered. I want to thank the player, the president of Thursday night, Phil DeCesare, ESO, the referee to 30. He refereed a great match this week. Unbelievable. Sure he did. Kissing, sure he did, Joe. Does not help. And, and in case you haven't heard, not only did I go to high school with Missy Beefcake, but I am the current the 30 champion, as you can see the belt right well, behind me and all that stuff. So, And he slugged her boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, and by the way, anybody out there, if you're in the chat, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. We love uh, you. I'm sure we some people miss some of the stuff. Don't forget my... Uh, my ridiculous recap show airs Sunday nights at eight o'clock. I just recap all the big stories and wrestling for the week, as well as what's going on the Monty and the Pharaoh channel. So stay tuned for that. It's live. You can catch it either live or on the replay, but uh, that's going good on the channel as well too. So it's a good recap show, just highlighting the week's events and so forth. Raw, SmackDown, any happenings with AEW and everything, any big stories that take place that you might've missed out on. And plus I throw a couple of tidbits in there. I'm going to be having guests on as well. So stay tuned for that, folks. Joe, an idea for the intro for that show. Do you remember the show Perfect Strange? I think it was Perfect Strangers with that guy, Balky. Yeah. He said, yeah, he said, don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. You're going to have that on the beginning. <laughs> have, you see, have you seen the intro to that yet? I haven't, but I, but, oh, but, yeah. uh, no, I, but I better that. check it out. That Those videos that were shot on the home video are mine. I got Roman Reigns climbing the top rope. I was front row for a match. When he was U.S. champion, got him going right up top rope, right in front of me. And awesome, a, man. A quick, a quick story about that. When I took that video, the Roman Reigns fan club that has like millions of followers on that, they asked me to use the video. I just said, yeah, go ahead. Do whatever you want with it. And that thing went viral in about two seconds because, you know, it was a great shot of Roman Reigns. And the second half of the video is uh, a young Liv Morgan, Sasha Banks, and Bailey. Uh, dancing around the ring and that's when the ridiculous graphic comes up as they're dancing around the ring because they just want to match you know so it's kind of neat it's got a cute little uh music riff to it homemade nice. music riff. so it, it's not bad throw so in a little balky <laughs> yeah ridiculous <laughs> recap. Be ridiculous yeah because i always say this is ridiculous that's what i always say <laughs> you hear me on the 30 this is ridiculous i can't <laughs> believe it so tune into the ridiculous recap show nonetheless thank you everybody in the chat thank you guys 
we are out, way out of time. Probably getting yelled at for being taken so long, but nonetheless. Hey, guys, Absolutely. have a great weekend. We'll see you guys later. Get some good Zs, everybody. Peace. What a day. Yeah. <laughs>